Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique in Learned Vinci V style. Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we begin with a story. A little while back I was watching this man, the Honest Wargamer Rob and Owen, and they introduced me to this wonderful thing called Smash Bat. They mentioned this new FEC, Flesh Eater Quartz list, and this incredible Vargulf that could destroy entire enemy armies. And then I went and looked at the figure. Oh lord. And I stopped thinking about that army. And then, they released this beautiful model for Curse City. And I thought, okay, maybe we've got something here. So I converted everything up, and it's time to paint an army. I'm going to take you through the entire process. And we begin here with the priming, actually. I started with my standard black primer, but instead of doing a normal zenithal, I'm shooting some rock brawn red primer from below, but any deep red would work. And as we're watching these steps, I want to talk about the concept here. Now we're moving into a standard zenithal, I'm using a light ivory color from above. When you're picking your army to do this process, to try to paint an army fast, there's a couple important things. One, stay around a regular army size, 2000 points, something like that. Don't get too crazy. Uh, my next step here is just applying some Reichland Flesh Shade over everything. Pick simple figures. The right army equals success. For example, here I'm able to dry brush this guy efficiently the whole thing because he's basically all flesh. Miniatures with huge amounts of detail, with lots of different types of textures, they're going to slow you down. Something like Flesh Eaters or whatever, make for a perfect army for this, because look how fast I can just zip through all of these guys, dry brushing everything very quickly. Each individual step as I'm prepping them with all of this undershading is so fast because they're mostly uniform. Now let's not say they don't have some different stuff going on. There's fur, there's wings and so on. Now, if you wanted flesh colored, by the way, you could kind of stop here, but we're going to go farther. And this leads us to the simple color palette. When you're working on an army fast, pick a nice, simple, but striking color palette. If I wanted to stay flesh shaded, I could have stopped there, but I didn't. I want them to look jaundiced, sick, you know, dead. So I took some Plague Bearer flesh contrast paint and I'm airbrushing it over. Now it's not going to act like contrast paint, but it will tint them this awful, hideous, dead yellow color. Then I'm taking some green ink and shooting it from below. Now, why did I use the red and the green? Because this is basically a reverse Verdaccio. In Verdaccio, you use green, and you put red fleshes over top to make it seem a little more neutral. Here, I'm using reds underneath and shooting green over the top to neutral out the green. So there's that hint of death, but it's not overwhelming. Next up, I take my airbrush and I shoot just a little bit of now kind of a whiter color. This is again going back to that flesh ivory just on the highest spots, not over the whole thing, top of the shoulders, top of the head, just creating that volumetric light. So that simple color palette with simple figures have set me up for success because I can execute on this amount of figures. It's 77 models. So every time you see this sort of time stay, this uh, uh, fast process here, this is going through 77 different models but I was able to do all of this very quick. And I planned all these steps out in advance. That's the other big thing. When it's a big project like this, plan it all out, stick to simple steps, set yourself up for success. All right, so it's about uh, two something in the morning. I've been at it for about two and a half hours. And uh, as you can see, I've got paint all over my face because we're working so fast. That's fine, I don't see an issue. Uh, and we're finally done with, you know, this airbrushing stage. Now the bright part of the bright side of this, sorry, that's very dark at this angle, but the bright side of this is that uh, the skin is mostly done. Uh, these guys look pretty good as far as skin goes for where I want them to be. So now we get to just move on to some details. And uh, from there, we're gonna start picking some stuff out. Now it's time to get into the really fun techniques. One of the best parts about picking an army like this uh, and this is why I say it's so important to choose your force, 
uh, as you know, when you're going to do a speed painting project, pick something that you can speed paint. Certain models can, certain models can't, as I mentioned. And the best part about this one is when you get done with the skin, you've got done with 80% of the model. So there you go. So now let's go back to the table and it's time to get out the brush and do some fun stuff. So I've set myself for success with a simple force, a simple scheme, and the right amount of figures. 77 models is doable. And with the airbrush, I was able to complete the flesh, the major part of the figure all by itself, but we've got to get the detail. And for this stuff, we're going to rely on contrast paints, very heavily used contrast in this, because I have so much other work and zenithal activities, it actually is really easy to just use contrast and have it look tabletop ready. So I took some black Templar, covered about half of the, the areas I wanted with that. Then I took some flesh terrors red, and you can see I'm just working over the top. And I'm working wet on wet so that the two blend together. Again, work fast uh, with a brush, and then the two wet contrast paints, they seep into each other. And I don't need to worry too much about blending because it's doing it for me. I did everything I could with the airbrush, used all that undershading to set myself up to provide an interesting flesh tone. Now it's about picking out the rest of those details and making them interesting. So what I'm doing here is going around on the model with things like the bones and dropping a little wildwood in at the base. Then just mixing in the same ivory color I was using for my highlight, <clears throat> but now it'll be much more strong when it's applied by brush. And I'm just mixing that in with that wet wildwood paint, hitting the little teeth, the eyes. By the way, this was one brush I use for everything on here. This is a size three. And I do every part of every miniature with this size three. I don't swap around again. Everything I can do to increase the speed of the thing, right? Here I'm getting into that pure ivory and really just making sure those bones stand out. And you see now that that dark line of that wildwood has been mostly subsumed into the layers I put on top. But because there's a nice light, dark, light, dark line, everything stands out. Now for a little fun touch. I took some thinned down Black Templar contrast and I'm running that over their hands and feet. And you notice how it just kind of seeps down in there and coats and everything. This is thinned down about 50-50 just with water. And it gives this wonderful staining effect to the hands. And now I'm gonna take some of the red and do the same thing again, but over the edge of the claws. So we get all these wonderful transitions of, uh, of hue between the edge of the feet where it goes red, then to black, then to the green, and so on. And that just creates more visual interest. Now, sometimes when you're working fast, you'll make mistakes like I did here. All you've got to do is take a little bit of that ivory color, a neutral tone, touch it over the top. Now it's very complicated skin tone, but it's small areas, it doesn't matter. Just touch a little bit on there because it's very opaque paint, covers over the spot, I let it dry and then I go right into that plate bearer flesh and I just work a little bit over that to tint it back to the same color. All right, so we're six hours and one minute into it there and uh, we're making pretty good progress. Uh, you'll see a picture right up here, one of these sides, there'll be a picture and uh, to kind of show you where we're at. Uh, I have about six, five, six hours of ghoul work left at this point. The ghouls, anytime you got 60 of a model, boy oh boy does it take a long time because it's just a lot of repetitive steps. So the key is when you hit this point in trying to get a project done like this and trying to do this kind of a paint, the key is you just gotta power through. Find some music to listen to, put on a good book, find a funny video that you can have on on the side and just listen to and laugh. Whatever it is, find something to keep you working. Uh, flip your phone over so you're not looking at it uh, because that will just distract you and becomes an easy way out. Just focus in on taking those steps, hit that flow state, get in that zen space, and uh, and keep going. So at this point, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, we'll see how we feel next update. So part of what you have to do when you're working like this is get everything down to a process. I was able to do each one of these ghouls in about eight minutes, which sounds insanely fast. But the reality is when you have 60 of them to do and you multiply that out, it's a lot of time, right? Because what that means is every eight is a little more than an hour and I've got a lot more than eight to do. So I actually thought I would put this whole sort of process in there. I recorded one whole ghoul. 
you can see how I worked each of the steps in turn. Like every time I touch a color, it's everything there. I did all the black and all the red over top of it, mixing them in, use a little bit of the wildwood to blend it together, hit all of the necessary parts, hit all of the ivory to get all of that, uh, tint the eyes red, go, right? When you're working on these kinds of big projects where you've got a lot of the same thing, the key is to establish a process. And you do that early. That's why you plan your steps out, why you paint a test model, and why you know what you're doing. You don't want to be discovering while you're working. So look at the different models you have. Maybe some of them have some different elements that they don't all have. Figure out how you're going to tackle those deviations from the norm and that will help you move through everything quickly efficiently and get that army painted so here we are it is many hours later uh, just shy of 11 hours as you can see there and uh, all the ghouls are done so that's great 60 ghouls done and finished feeling good about where we are in the progress so now it's time to turn to some characters. And this is sort of a piece of advice I have, whether you're trying to paint your army in 24 hours or just trying to paint your army, period. Um, oftentimes after a big push like that, where I was really just grinding, grinding, grinding on the same base troops, it's good to change pace. Go do a single character, get that finished. That's gonna feel good, feel rewarding. You've got a big chunk there finished and sort of the points they represent. And then you can move back to maybe another troop type and then back to a character. By breaking up your work uh, like that, you sort of, you know, refresh your palate, keep yourself going, and uh, make it so you can get through the whole project. So let's get back to it and keep painting. So I wanted to talk about how I tackled some of the special cases. For example, these Crypt Flayer stand-ins, which are the little uh, Vircos wolves or whatever that I, or, or vampires that I added uh, wings to. I had to create a new technique for them because it was different, but again, it's the same principles lay down the black and then lay down some new black work wet on wet with the red right keeping with these simple techniques is it refined is it perfect no we're not going for perfect time is our master here so we're just working wet and rough still pushing for that contrast so notice how i'm working a lot of wet over wet paint and just roughly stippling and blending it all together i do want to take a moment to talk about characters characters even in a speed paint are still important so with my Smash Bats, the big characters of this army, I go in and I put in some extra time, like adding texture to the wing flaps, uh, putting some extra detail and picking out individual hairs, picking out their claws. I was so fast with the other ones, this bought me time to do things like add texture to the wings, put in extra little texture on their skin, their faces, clean up mistakes. When it comes to rank and file massed infantry, the reality is a big horde of them looks impressive if they're all painted. But with the state, you lose the detail. But with the standalone characters, it's worth spending the extra time. Again, true if you're speed painting a whole army or just painting your army normal. Put the love into the characters. All right, so we're just shy of 15 hours into this whole mess. And uh, basically everything, the primary stuff is done. Uh, so we're way ahead on here. We've got all our boys here ready to go, all their primary colors done. What we're gonna do now is the bases and a little bit of the metallics. And thankfully, since the metallics are gonna be heavily rusted, we can actually do that all at the same time. So uh, everybody's getting a quick coat of varnish just to lock everything in, flatten everything out, and then bases, metallics, and we're gonna call, call this project closed. Now, normally I like complicated bases, but here we're keeping it simple in line with everything else. We laid down some mud, we're dry brushing it with the same ivory as everything else. With the metallics, we just coated them in a base simple metal. Then we're going to go in with browns and oranges and stipple those colors in. More visual interest, more breakup to those elements, adding that tonal variation into them because now there's little items to discover, little rust spots, little texture that brings everything together and makes it interesting. So, here we go. All done, uh, 77 figures. Took me 17 and a half hours uh, total, but uh, we got there. 
and uh, one more army down. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to end this with some shots of the whole army so you can see everything up close and, uh, and how we got on. But uh, this was really great. And uh, now, can Smash Bat smash that? Why, yes, he can. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this. Give it a like if you did. Subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. If you've got questions, drop them down below. But as always, thank you for watching this, and we'll see you next time.